Motivational Summaries presents to you the audiobook, Blue Ocean Shift, Beyond Competing, Proven Steps to Inspire Confidence and Seize New Growth by Bai Chan Kim and Renee Mauborn. Blue Ocean Shift is packed with all new research and examples of how leaders in diverse industries and organizations made the shift and created new markets by applying the process and tools outlined in the book. Whether you are a cash-strapped startup or a large, established company, nonprofit, or national government, you will learn how to move from red to blue oceans in a way that builds your people's confidence so that they own and drive the process. With battle-tested lessons learned from successes and failures in the field, Blue Ocean Shift is critical reading for leaders, managers, and entrepreneurs alike. You'll learn what works, what doesn't, and how to avoid the pitfalls along the way. This book will empower you to succeed as you embark on your own Blue Ocean journey. Blue Ocean Shift is indispensable for anyone committed to building a compelling future. Section 1 of 2. What is a Blue Ocean Shift? The main idea of this section is, pure and simple, making a Blue Ocean Shift is about moving your organization from market competing to market creating. There are really only three ways you can make a Blue Ocean Shift. 1. Offer a breakthrough solution for an existing problem in your industry. 2. Redefine an existing problem within your industry. 3. Identify a brand new problem or seize a brand new opportunity. Figure out which of these approaches you are trying to pull off and then come up with your market-creating strategy and you're halfway there. A blue ocean shift creates a larger pie for everyone first and foremost. Figuring out who gets what comes later. Most organizational leaders tend to operate on two basic assumptions. One, Market boundaries and industry conditions are a given, and they cannot be changed, and therefore you have to build your strategy accordingly. 2. To excel in an existing industry, you have to go all-in in pursuing a differentiation strategy so you can charge higher prices, or work aggressively to become the low-cost provider. You can't do both. As a result, companies fight for market share in industries which are already in existence. This can be termed a red ocean mindset in that it ultimately leads to lower profits and little, if any, growth. An alternative strategy is to instead think about blue oceans, the industries which are yet to be created. With this mindset, you start thinking about how to seed and then grow those new markets. Instead of obsessing over how do we compete, you start thinking deeply about how do we create a new pool of additional customers. You also think about how you spark the process how do you get your people to buy into the new approach, and how you will go about aligning your corporate resources behind exploiting a new and different market. To make a successful blue ocean shift, there are three key components that you will need to get right. One, you have to be prepared to expand your thinking and look at the value-cost dynamic differently in order to expand your horizons and see new opportunities. Rather than being welded to historical industry thinking and best practices, you have to break away from them and open up a new value-cost frontier altogether. 2. You need practical tools for market creation, combined with proper guidance on how to apply them constructively so as to create a compelling new offering. You need a way for your people to work together to create something different, which will then create new market space. 3. You need some humanness that is, a process which inspires and builds your people's confidence to own and drive execution. Confidence is an essential component in any transformation, and you need your people to align their hearts and minds with your new strategy. Some examples of successful blue ocean shifts of the past would include the television show Sesame Street, which opened up a new value-cost frontier. It did not replace or supersede preschools, libraries, or even parents reading bedtime stories to their children. Sesame Street successfully created a new marketplace for preschool edutainment. When Pfizer introduced Viagra, it created a new marketplace for lifestyle drugs, which has rapidly grown to be a multi-billion dollar business opportunity. Many other lifestyle drugs have followed. In 1983, Grameen Bank started making microloans, which enabled low-income people to start their own businesses or engage in agriculture. Traditional lenders had always ignored the poor because they were deemed to be unsuitable as borrowers, 
but microlenders substituted reputation and community standing for collateral. By helping people break the poverty cycle, microfinance has ballooned into a multi-billion dollar industry in its own right, with plenty of room for future growth. Other large industries which have come into existence in the past few decades include crowdfunding, online dating, health clubs, life coaching, and network devices. These blue ocean industries have created tens of thousands of new jobs without even being at the expense of any existing industry dynamics. Blue ocean markets are great because you're not going up against entrenched competitors with lots of resources. You use existing company assets to target a brand new batch of customers you've never before accessed. If successful, a blue ocean move can create lots of new jobs and future growth. There's no real downside to making a blue ocean shift, but it does need to be done right. In practice, there are three basic ways you can bring about a blue ocean shift. One, you can offer a breakthrough solution for an existing industry problem, like when CDs came along to allow consumers to store and replay music at high levels of quality. People loved CDs because they could skip from song to song without twisted cassette tapes. CDs were then superseded by MP3 players and streaming music on demand. Today, more customers listen to digital music than ever purchased CDs, cassettes, or vinyl records. 2. You can solve an existing problem or seize a brand new opportunity, which is what Sesame Street achieved and Pfizer did with Viagra. Providing ringtones which allow mobile users to express their individuality is another multi-billion dollar industry which was created out of thin air. Other products which have done the same include cybersecurity, lifelong learning, virtual reality, obesity treatment, and other health services. 3. You can redefine and solve an existing industry problem using new assumptions and technology. Cirque du Soleil combined the thrill of the circus with theater and ballet in a refreshingly new way to create new market space involving adults and corporate clients. Group SEB took the industry challenge of trying to make a great electric french fry maker and introduced ActiFry, which makes mouth-watering, healthy fries with no frying or oil. Industry demand grew by 40% as people who would never consider buying a traditional fryer purchased the ActiFry machines. Making a successful blue ocean shift is not about a technology breakthrough per se. Many times, the organization that creates a new technology and pioneers it is far less successful than a follower who commercializes the technology. The key to making a blue ocean shift is to be the player who converts that new technology into a value innovation for consumers. Be the organization that produces a sizable leap in buyer value so that you open up a new value cost frontier and you'll succeed. W. Chan Kim and Renee Melbourne say, how do blue ocean strategists see new opportunities where others only see red oceans of declining profits and growth? They don't get taken in by what everyone else takes for granted. They embrace a perspective that allows them to ask fundamentally different sets of questions, which, in turn, enable them to perceive and appreciate the fallacies behind long-held assumptions and the artificial boundaries we unknowingly impose upon ourselves. Their perspective is very different from the market competing logic that dominates most executives' mental models. End quote. So, how do you reframe your thinking from red to blue? There are four principles to apply here. 1. Blue ocean strategists don't take existing industry conditions as a given, they set out to actively reshape them in their favor. That might sound ambitious, but the reality is you don't have to automatically accept an industry's current conditions or market boundaries are fixed and invariable. You can mold things and change them so they suit you better. Nothing is impossible. 2. Blue ocean strategists don't worry about beating the competition. They aim to make the competition irrelevant. In other words, you don't assume what competitors are doing is necessarily right. Instead, you figure out what buyers will value rather than worrying about what industries are competing on. Steve Jobs was famous for driving Apple to create, quote, insanely great products and services rather than products which were merely better than what competitors offered. 3. Blue Ocean Strategists Focus on Creating and Capturing New Demand, Not Existing Customers If you ask an existing customer how can we make you happier, 
they will usually come back with offer more for less style answers. A better approach is to look at the larger pool of non-customers, uncover their pain points, and then grow the market by tapping into that extra demand. Blue Ocean strategists know non-customers will provide the greatest insights into what your industry is doing wrong to limit demand and how you can overcome this. 4. Blue Ocean strategists simultaneously pursue differentiation and low costs. They break the usual value-cost trade-off. To achieve this, you have to focus simultaneously on what to offer less of at the same time as you offer more of something else. It's a juggling act, but when you get it right, you can open up a new value-cost frontier and a new marketplace. A great example of a brilliant Blue Ocean strategy is Salesforce.com, a Customer Relationship Management Service Provider, CRM. Before Salesforce came along, CRM software was expensive to buy and maintain. Salesforce.com introduced highly reliable, flexible, and easy-to-use CRM software accessible over the web via a monthly subscription. By reducing the customer's total cost of ownership by 90% and by allowing subscriptions to be canceled at any time, Salesforce.com made the competition irrelevant. The company also learned what features mattered and which did not, allowing it to focus better. Within 10 years of launch, Salesforce.com generated more than $1 billion in annual revenue as more and more businesses started using CRM. Today, Salesforce.com has 20,000 employees and an annual revenues of more than $8 billion. Steve Jobs said, You tend to get told that the world is the way it is, but that's a very limited view. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you, and you can change it, you can influence it, you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute you understand that you can poke life, that you can change it, you can mold it, that's maybe the most important thing. To shake off this erroneous notion that life is there and you're just going to live in it. And once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. End quote. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn say, The opportunity here is to create new demand where there is no competition not to simply get a tad more of a shrinking red ocean. This is a summary of the book Blue Ocean Shift Beyond Competing, Section 2 of 2, Five Steps to Making a Blue Ocean Shift. The main idea of this section is, the process for making a blue ocean shift follows a five-step sequence. 1. Get started. 2. Understand where you are. 3. Imagine where you could be. 4. Figure out how to get there. 5. Make your move. Step 1. Get started. Step 1 is choosing the right place to start your Blue Ocean initiative. You need to pick a zone of transformation where you have a lot to gain but which is not too ambitious and where you can feasibly execute on your desired strategy. The best way to do this is to use a tool called a Pioneer Migrator Settler Map. In essence, this tool can be used to map out the competitive landscape of an industry and also to assess how innovative your company's own product and service offerings are. The Pioneer Migrator Settler Map has three segments. 1. Pioneers Offer the market value innovations. Pioneers are poised for strong and profitable growth because they have fans rather than customers. Pioneers offer unprecedented value and are great to have. Two. Settlers are at the other end of the spectrum. These are the businesses or the offerings which tend to be cash cows. Settlers compete by making incremental changes to offerings or to prices. Settlers aren't doing anything to grow and eventually become a commodity offering. 3. Migrators lie somewhere in between. These businesses or these offerings offer a value improvement over the competition, but they don't offer breakthrough value innovations. You can put together a Pioneer Migrator Settler map for your own offerings to see how vulnerable or how innovative you are strategically. This will highlight which offerings are Me Too products and which are genuine value innovations. You can also draw circles on the map which represent the respective revenues of each product or service as well. 
Understanding your company's current portfolio on this map at the present time, and then planning where you want your company to be in the future, is critical to do for two reasons. Number one, this will enable you to look beyond current revenue numbers and clarify where you are vulnerable and need to act. Two, a top-down view like this will ready your organization to start some blue ocean initiatives to become more innovative. It will also highlight what to change first rather than trying to change everything at once, which never works. For example, if you were to plot out the map for a company like Microsoft, you would see that the bulk of the company's profits, more than 100 billion US dollars over the last decade, have been generated by Office and Windows. These are settlers. That would explain why Microsoft's share price has remained relatively flat. The company's cash cows are decades old, and Microsoft does not currently have any killer apps which are pioneers in the pipeline. Once you clarify the number of value innovation projects you have underway at the present time, you can make plans for how many more you need to get going in the future. You can also earn the right to grow in the eyes of your people. That happens when everyone sees the benefits of one Blue Ocean Shift project and then agree to participate actively in more projects in the future. Note that you develop the Pioneer Migrator Settler map from the point of view of your buyers and customers. They have to determine whether what you're developing offers a quantum leap in value compared to the available alternatives. Customers ultimately determine whether or not your investment in R&D and product development is good or not. Once you've drawn your map, plotting where you are today, you can plan for the future. Ideally, you want your map's center of gravity to shift from projects which are settlers towards a healthy mix of migrators and pioneers. You can use the map to identify when a blue ocean initiative is urgently needed. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn say, the point here is to use the map to build a shared understanding of the likely consequences of inaction. Are the organization's growth ambitions consistent with the aggregated pioneer migrator settler map the group has drawn? Or is there a discrepancy? As the implications sink in, the team's motivations to launch a blue ocean shift initiative takes hold and grows stronger. Now it's time to catch the wave and share your intention to select a single business or product or service offering to launch a blue ocean shift initiative and begin upgrading your overall portfolio. End quote. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn also say, The value you deliver today drives buyer behavior, which determines your future growth prospects, whereas the value you delivered yesterday determines your current market share. Innovation, on the other hand, is key because it allows you to overcome existing industry conditions. Without it, companies are stuck in the trap of competitive improvements. End quote. Step 2. Understand where you are. Step two is your organization's wake-up call. You look at the current state of play in your industry. After collectively building a clear picture of the competitive landscape as it currently stands, you can then move internal consensus about whether to make a move to a fresh blue ocean market opportunity. The best way to do this is to use a one-page tool called the Strategy Canvas Tool. Here. You're trying to visualize how your organization configures its present offerings in relation to its competitors. You're trying to concisely state how you bring together the four key elements of business strategy. 1. The factors you compete on. 2. The offering level buyers receive for each factor. 3. Your strategic profile and cost structure. 4. Your competitors' profiles and cost structures. To use this tool, the steps are 1. Decide what are the key factors, between 5 and 12, your industry has traditionally competed on and invested in. Include factors you and competitors invest in to gain a competitive advantage. The kinds of factors industries compete on include price, technical support, delivery lead times, after-sales service, customer financing, performance, inventory availability, ambience. Two. Now, for each of those factors, designate whether your customers receive a high-level offering or a low-level offering. A high score designates that you offer buyers more of this, while a low score suggests that you offer buyers less of this factor. 3. You then connect the dots to create a visual profile of your current business strategy. 4. 
You then add in to the canvas how your competitors perform on each of these factors to come up with their strategic profiles. By the time you finish this mapping exercise, you will have a good visual snapshot of the current state of play in your industry. Show whether anyone is taking a differentiated approach or if there is convergence in business strategies. It is commonplace in mature industries for every player's strategic profiles to become mirror images of one another. In practical terms, to make a blue ocean shift, you'll need to come up with a strategic profile which is different and distinctive. You cannot make a blue ocean shift by doing what everyone else is already doing. Specifically, a blue ocean move must meet three criteria. One, your strategic profile has to diverge from the industry's average profile. Two, your strategy has to focus on offering buyers a leap in value while simultaneously lowering costs by eliminating everything which does not add value. Three, your strategic profile will need a compelling tagline that speaks to the market and honestly communicates what your offering provides. Buyers can sniff out empty slogans and platitudes, so your tagline needs to be genuine and resonate to be effective. You'll often find that as your people develop a strategy canvas for your industry, there will be a growing sense that you need to change and do something better. That's good, because if your people confirm the need for change themselves, they will come to own that change and drive it to completion. That's always better than a decree from on high. To illustrate how this might play out, consider the charity fundraising industry in the United Kingdom. The historical players in this industry run year-long fundraising campaigns and do solicitations that often create donor fatigue. Then along came Comic Relief, which used a blue ocean strategy very effectively. Rather than raise funds all year, Comic Relief created Red Nose Day, which was a national day of wacky community fundraising. Comic Relief essentially crowdsourced fundraising by getting everyone to participate and raise money for charity. To become involved, you simply have to purchase a red plastic nose from the supermarket and start organizing sponsorships to do something fun or outrageous. Red Nose Day then ends with a telethon where everyone makes their pledges. Even better, 100% of donations raised by Red Nose Day go to charity. Comic Relief has been hugely successful because it does something completely different from all the other charities. The Strategy Canvas helps you see where you might be able to make a similar blue ocean move. Step 3. Imagine where you could be. Step 3 is where you identify unexplored spaces in the marketplace where value is trapped and waiting to be unlocked. You do this by discovering the customer pain points that the industry currently imposes on customers throughout their entire ownership experience. The more you understand how buyer value is trapped, the more blue ocean opportunities will open up. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn say, In the blue ocean shift process, pain points, which are often hidden, are not constraints. They are blatant opportunities to change the playing field of strategy. But most industries become blind to them, just as buyers often become numb to them, because they assume that's simply the way things are. End quote. To uncover customer value and find problems worth solving, use the Buyer Utility Map. This map combines the full breadth of the buyer's experience cycle with the six buyer utility levers. It will highlight the buyer pain points your industry has traditionally imposed on customers without even realizing it. When people buy your product or service, they sequentially go through six stages of experiences. 1. Purchase getting to the store, finding what they want, checking out. 2. Delivery, how long it takes, how convenient it is, and what can go wrong. 3. Use, the customer experience of using your product or service. 4. Supplements, other products they have to buy in order to use your product. 5. Maintenance, cleanup, repairs, any other requirements. 6. Disposal, what buyers do at the end of the user cycle and what's involved. At each of those stages, your product or service may deliver a specific type of customer utility. 1. Customer productivity. Fulfills customer needs and enhances efficiency. 2. Simplicity. Eliminates user complexities or mental hassles. 3. Convenience. Able to deliver benefits 24-7 or 365 as and when required. 
4. Risk Reduction Lowers Financial, Physical, Reputational Risks 5. Fun and Image Conveys the kind of look, feel, attitude, and style you want 6. Environmental Friendliness Is good for the environment as a whole Many industries focus on just one or two stages of the experience cycle and overlook opportunities to provide value elsewhere. There will also often be just a single point on the grid that your industry competes on at present. If you mark that with a zero, you can also mark other spaces on the grid with an X where other customer pain points arise. Inevitably, when you sit down and analyze the entire buying sequence through the eyes of ordinary customers, this will be quite illuminating for your organization. It's not at all unusual for managers to be so locked into competing head-to-head -head on the traditional criteria they never take a step back and seek a wide-angle understanding of what buyers are actually experiencing. Put another way, this exercise is designed to help you see the ocean of non-customers in a different light. You can classify those who are not yet customers as being in three tiers. Your industry, Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. Tier 1 non-customers need what you offer and are waiting for something better to come along. Tier 2 non-customers reject your industry because it is too expensive or it fails to meet their needs. Tier 3 non-customers have never been targeted by your industry and look like a bad fit. Blue ocean opportunities arise when you meet different buyer needs and go after Tier 1, 2, and 3 demands with reconstructed offerings. Step 4. Figure out how to get there. The object of Step 4 is to create commercially compelling new market space by redefining the playing field itself. The aim here is to see what the other players don't see and create some breakthrough solutions to the customer's problems. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn say, Boundaries do not define what must be or should be. They merely define what is. None of them is a law of nature. All of them are the product of people's minds, and as such, they are open to change. But over time, this fact tends to be forgotten, and people come to take them as eternal truths. They become a conceptual cage that organizations lock themselves into, even though every one was created by an individual organization. End quote. There are, in fact, six paths you can follow to open up a new value cost frontier. 1. Alternative industries. 2. Alternative strategic groups. 3. Redefine buyer groups. 4. Complementary products and services. 5. Rethink functional emotional orientation. 6. Join external trends. 1. Look across alternative industries and ask what other industries solve the same problems as you do. Identify the largest of these alternatives and focus on what you can do to attract these non buyers. 2. Look across strategic groups within your industry and figure out what you need to change in order to attract non-buyers from the two largest strategic groups that exist. Analyze what you need to add in order to get that group to choose your product or service offering. 3. Redefine buyer groups and see whether there are users, purchasers, and influencers who are largely ignored at present. Figure out what value you need to offer to attract different buyer groups. Four. Look at complementary products and services and see if you can come up with appealing solutions. Look at what happened before, during, and after product use for market expansion opportunities. 5. Rethink the functional emotional orientation of your industry and analyze what your market would be if you flipped the orientation. Come at the market from a different direction. 6. Join external trends which are shaping your marketplace over time. Take on board the implications of those trends and consider how you need to evolve your offerings and your business models accordingly. Working your way through the Six Paths framework will take time and effort, but you cannot outsource your ears or eyes. Taking the time to discuss and observe firsthand will be invaluable in that it will generate lots of worthwhile insights. A good way to do this is 1. Get your people together and map out the big picture goal of finding a blue ocean opportunity. 2. Divide your group into two smaller teams. 3. Have each team select three of the six paths and develop work plans for what they would need to do to move down each of those paths. 4. 
have the team members work individually to generate their own insights and then hold a team meeting where they select the most relevant ideas. Each team then goes out and does interviews with 10 to 15 non-buyers. 5. Once your teams have been energized by their in-person interactions with non-buyers, they can then get together again to sort through their insights and ideas to develop some viable blue ocean alternatives and strategic options. To get people to come up with workable and well-formulated blue ocean strategic options at this point, use the four actions framework. This involves figuring out the answers to four questions as you try to come up with something that is both differentiated and low cost. Which factors does the industry take for granted and compete on which could be eliminated? Which factors could be reduced well below the industry standard to reduce costs? Which factors should be raised well above the industry standard in order to differentiate? Which factors has the industry never offered which should be created? The first two questions will generate insights on how you can reduce costs without impacting on the customer's perceived value. The second question looks at how you can create a leap in buyer value. Combine these and you have the chance to open up a new value cost frontier, which is the essence of a blue ocean opportunity. Use the four actions framework to clarify that potential blue oceans options do in fact eliminate, reduce, raise, or create factors for future customers. Also, do a quick reality check to make sure what you are suggesting pursues both differentiation and low cost simultaneously. As mentioned, all viable blue ocean options open up a new value cost frontier. That is the essence of a blue ocean shift. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn say, Blue ocean moves seldom involve lots of bells and whistles, nor are the ideas usually fancy and shiny. In fact, once they're completed, they often look remarkably simple and clear and have the ring of common sense. Be sure to remind the team of this so they don't begin to doubt the power of their simple idea and start adding extraneous or clever factors that merely complicate it and seriously diminish its blue ocean potential. End quote. Step 5. Make your move. Step 5 is where you make a decision on which blue market move you want to pursue. You do this by running an in-house Blue Ocean Fair where presentations on various alternatives are given, people vote on which move to follow, and your Blue Ocean strategy is then finalized and ultimately launched. To hold a good Blue Ocean Fair, 1. Start with an overview of your industry's present red ocean realities and the urgent need to make a blue ocean shift. 2. Have your team present their Blue Ocean strategic options using tools like the offerings description and tagline, the strategy canvas for the option, the four actions framework, a description of the benefits to buyers, the economic benefits for your organization, anticipated hurdles and challenges. Highlight how each blue ocean move would generate a leap in value for buyers and at the same time give you the opportunity to lower your costs. 3. Have all attendees get familiar with each blue ocean option on the table. Then, have them vote on which option they like the most. 4. Probe and quiz people on why they voted the way they did. Use this feedback to look for ways to improve each Blue Ocean option. 5. The executive team then decides which Blue Ocean option to move forward with, taking into account the feedback received and the popularity of each proposal amongst rank-and-file employees. Choose whichever Blue Ocean option has the highest market potential, and the smallest possible execution gaps or challenges. 6. Run a rapid market test to confirm the market potential of your chosen offering. This test will involve making a prototype and asking potential customers for their feedback. 7. Formalize your big-picture business model for executing on your Blue Ocean idea by specifying which factors you will eliminate to lower costs, your new and improved cost model, your desired target profit margin, your pricing model. More than likely, your blue ocean move will have a challenging cost target that you need to hit in order to make everything work. To hit that target, there are at least three questions you should ask. One, who can we partner with? Don't try and do everything yourself as you bring a new idea to market. Find other companies with experience in what you're trying to do and team up with them. This is a very savvy way forward. Two, how can we streamline and also innovate? 
Look at the feasibility of using less expensive raw materials, less expensive locations, or replacing proprietary processes with cheaper generic versions. For example, an orchestra cut its recruiting costs substantially by holding auditions over YouTube. Look for ways to streamline everywhere. 3. How can we multiply the contributions of people who are positive and enthused about what we do? The best way to cut costs is to enhance the roles of your customer-facing employees. Find ways to empower them and expand their role. Trust your frontline staff to represent your brand well and let them do exactly that. Once you work your way through those questions, you should have your blue ocean move put together. The best rollout strategy is usually to start small and then go fast and wide. That is, build your first couple of locations or offerings, iron out all the snags that will come to the surface, figure out how to scale, and then hit the gas and roll out your idea worldwide. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn say, This rollout strategy has distinct advantages on several grounds. For one, it acknowledges that there will almost always be points of refinement and correction needed in your Blue Ocean offering and business model. This helps keep people emotionally on track in the face of issues that arise when launching. It says, yes, we are aiming for the gold, but we shouldn't get discouraged or thrown when there are initial glitches. Rather, we should expect this, keep an open mind, refuse to get discouraged or look for someone to blame, see this as a valuable learning opportunity, and set about working through the bugs as fast as possible. This approach also minimizes financial risk, credibility risk in the market, and what we think of as demotivation risk with your people. End quote. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn say, We suggest that you think about the launch and the rollout of your Blue Ocean move as though you were producing the next smash hit on Broadway. To put on a smashing play, you need to first expect glitches, and then make minor modifications to get it right. You and your people need to fully understand that adjustments are the natural course of action for building excellence. End quote. W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn conclude, Now you are ready to make your blue ocean shift. You have the tools and the process and the mindset to make this happen from start to finish. The world needs more blue oceans. We invite you to create yours. End quote. This has been a summary of the book, Blue Ocean Shift, Beyond Competing, written by W. Chan Kim and Renee Moburn. <laughs>